Legend of Boy here, and today we've got a Rating Your Doomstack video covering Wolfric the Wanderer with a Marauder Berserker Doomstack. Now these guys here have possibly some of the highest stats you'll ever see on any melee infantry unit in the game. The degree to which this guy has boosted this unit is be basically beyond ridiculous. As far as I'm concerned, it's essentially maxed out. So, if we have a look at it, weapon strength 151. I don't even think aspiring champions have that much weapon strength. Now, most of it is base weapon damage, but you've still got 46 armor-piercing damage in there. 107 melee attack, uh, 59 speed. Now, these are the three stats here that are actually being boosted over and over again due to resource uh, acquisition throughout the campaign. So there are dyes that you can obtain, which will increase the speed of, of Marauder units, and also furs. Furs will increase the melee attack and weapon strength specifically for Marauder Berserkers. So you can end up with Marauder Berserkers that are vastly stronger than Marauder Champions, which are a tier above them. Anyway, in this battle up here, we're going up against Reichland, where they've got a bit more than two full stacks. There's some high tier units in here. Uh, most of it is sort of mid-tier stuff. I'm only going to use the Marauder Berserkers here. Order Resolve on very high battle difficulty says Pyrrhic Victory. But uh, we'll see how they actually perform manually. Also, he's done all of the sea encounters. To give them those temporary buffs. So he's got the extra physical resistance. The uh, Curse of Cannibalism. The extra melee attack and melee defense. Also, Marauder Berserkers have the Berserk stat or trait. Which means that the longer they're in combat, they'll get more physical resistance and more melee attack. So that's uh, this one here, Berserk. So if we have a look at it, they currently have 55% physical resistance. But with an additional up to 20%, eventually... Now they will rampage when that happens, but that's, that's fine. It'd be up to 75 mel um, we oh, it's got physical resistance. Not quite as high as it was for the um, uh, the Savage Orc Biggins. But the Savage Orc Biggins didn't have this much melee attack and weapon strength. But in all honesty, I think that, the, that physical resistance on its own sort of trumps those other stats. But let's just see how these perform. So I'm not going to attack them right away. I just want to get into position. This is definitely the kind of army that you want to spread out wide. You want every single man to be in combat. You don't want to have a big blob or a big backline of people just not standing around not fighting. You want them all chopping down enemy units. But yeah, I really do appreciate it when people send in these maxed out doomstacks. Obviously, most people are probably not going to do this in their campaign. It's not really practical to do it. And if you can get to the point where you, you can build this... You've probably already won the campaign, but it really is, as I've said before, um, sort of a vanity project. There's nothing wrong with that. Once you've essentially won the campaign, what you want to do with your campaign is entirely up to you. And that's what makes uh, Total War Warhammer, or any particular Total War game, have a really long shelf life if there's things to do after you know the campaign is won. As opposed to just, if you've won the campaign, there's nothing else to do. But obviously not everyone's going to do this, and the game does not force you to do it. And if you find it boring, that's cool. And you just don't have to do it. The game does not force you to do this stuff. Alright, just waiting for them to get organized. Right, I'm getting shot a little bit, let's charge in. They really shouldn't have set up in the forest, because that gives us an advantage over the missile units. But I don't care. So normally, great swords should rip Marauder Berserkers to shreds because Marauder Berserkers are, and great swords are both anti-infantry, but they've got uh, quite a lot of armor. But in this case here, no, great swords don't stand a chance. Yeah, get in there closer. Pull through allows you to uh, get more of your guys in combat. Yep, just pull through. That's what you want to see. Okay, Carl Franz coming in here. Let's see how he goes with this. Well, Carl Franz is a strong legendary lord, so I didn't expect him to one-shot kill him. Chaos 
So, already good kills on this guy here, and he's fighting great swords with no other backup. Now, obviously, in a, in a normal battle, we're not doing a test. You would use these guys here. But when we're testing out these units, obviously, we're going to use um, special uh, restrictions. All right, pull through there. We're too blobbed up. Need them to kill quicker. Anybody standing around doing nothing is just a huge amount of weapon strength is just going to waste. I don't think we've got anyone standing around. Grain waters, right? Just pull through a little bit there. These guys here are mostly dead. Yep, so these guys here for the unit of great swords, and they are fine. They do have regen, but still take us some damage. Yeah, just a little bit of damage. So we should be at mostly... Yeah, there we go. 75% physical resistance there. Every now and again, I expect one of them to go into uh, Berserk mode. Well, Rampage. Carl Franz. Yeah, he's the one dishing out all the casualties here. Because he's got magical attacks bypassing all that physical resistance. Don't focus too much on Carl Franz. They're just not going to be great at dealing with them. Way more important to go after their missile units. Just pull through wherever needed. Okay, they've got mortars. And we are a little bit blobbed up here, so that's not ideal. Let's pull two of our units out and try to get around them if possible. We're trying to pin down the steam tanks. Let's get those guys around there. Good, almost at their back line. If you have a look at the mortars, they haven't done any damage. I think they just keep hitting, uh, keep hitting trees. Nobody should be sitting around doing nothing. This one here could be pulled out, I suppose. No, he's too in the thick of it. He would take more damage getting out, but he would just staying there. And I expect the army losses to be any moment now. So two full stacks essentially killed in seven minutes. Although we do have a few unbreakable units here that we need to deal with. Yeah, there's the army losses. This definitely puts the Rangers to shame, although to be fair to the Rangers, they're only tier 1, and these guys here, they're tier 2. But I would say that the uh, Savage Orc Biggins required a hell of a lot less effort and were better. There we go, they actually killed Carl Franz quite easily when they could focus on him. But as far as a melee infantry doomstack for Norska, it doesn't really get much better than this. This is way stronger than a Marauder Champion stack would be. And you could argue, you know, oh, but what about the armor? Physical resistance kind of trumps armor a lot of the time, unless you're going up against lots of magical attacks. And damage output is pretty damn important. This one here got killed 450. I think that's one of the ones that really got into the back line, killing all the archers. I'm going to take a handful of casualties. Now, I also suspect that you can actually make this army a little bit stronger. If instead of using Wolfric the Wanderer, you use um, Burble Spur Smirk Spew Pit, which is the reward for completing the Nurgle line, dedicating to Nurgle, or the Crow. I can't remember exactly, but I'm fairly sure he provides an additional 15% physical resistance to the entire army. 
I can't remember exactly. Whereas, if I remember correctly with Wolfric, he doesn't actually boost any units anymore. He used to boost... No, he does boost some units, actually. Um, let me just have a quick look. I just can't quite remember. Oh my god, he's... Yeah, he's conquered the entire map. So, if we ever look at his unique lineup here... This is the stuff that he boosts specific units. So, Spearmen, Marauder Hunters and Javelins, Marauder Horsemen. Not really something, I think, worth building a Doomstack around. Enemy Leadership, minus 5. Reduced upkeep cost minus 15%. Alright, so all Wolfric seems to be doing is just making the army a, a bit cheaper. Yeah. I think he used to boost Marauders in Warhammer 2, but I just can't remember. So, this army is absolutely dirt cheap, but I think he's only got... Yeah, he's only got a couple of armies there. But that is ridiculously cheap for what these guys here can dish out in value. In terms of, do you need to have Wolfric the Wanderer for this? No, because he's, he's not the one providing all of the buffs. What's happening here is you've got extra 5% speed for each one of these um, dies, which he said that there are 12 die buildings throughout the map. And then he said that furs here, yeah, this one's more important, melee attack plus 2 and weapon strength plus 5%. He said there are, there are 13 fur buildings throughout the map. Right. And look at this, he didn't actually finish any of the dedications, he just did the Hound's Gaze, which gives um, weapon strength plus 10%. What else is he possibly missing? None of the stuff is going to make the melee infantry any stronger. Except for, um, well, there's reduced upkeep cost 10%. Except for this guy here, Burble Smirk Spew Pit. Getting him, he is definitely the best legendary lord for Norska. He is amazing. So I've checked out all four of these now, and he is by far the best. Alright, cool. So, rating this. Let's Obviously, fight. most people are not going to get these guys set up to this absurd degree. While well, you don't have to conquer the entire map in order to get all 13 uh, fur buildings, because they're in specific locations, and there are some areas that are quite fur devoid, you know, even if you got three or four fur buildings, you'd start to really see a significant boost in these guys' strength. Because they're good units, just on their own. Because they're nice and quick, they're cheap, easy to replace, and they dish out loads of damage, which is really important with melee infantry, and a lot of melee infantry actually don't do that. So, even if you've only got just a little bit of a boost, you can get a lot of value out of these guys. So, I'd say that in terms of cost-effectiveness, this is a very cost-effective Doomstack for Norska. You don't have to play as the World Walkers for that, but if we have a look here, you do have reduced Upkeep cost for Marauder units, so it is slightly better if you are playing as as um, Norska, but they don't have any financial troubles anymore, so that's not really an issue. Uh, in terms of ease of use, it's pretty easy to use them. Just spread them out and charge. Just watch out for mass amounts of uh, missile units and magical attacks, and then you should be fine. Anything in melee, they'll rip them to shreds. In terms of strength, obviously, the more of those buildings you get, the stronger this is going to be. When you don't have any of those resources, these guys here, they'll 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 go up against things that are of equal value and do a decent job. But you're not going to walk out of every fight with basically no damage. It's only once you start getting all of the, start to get some of the buffs that you can get. And there's loads through technologies, and uh, by um, obtaining um, like certain capitals, so that you can get the technology from that. Uh, only once you've done all of that will you really start to see these guys here get super strong. And that's kind of what happens with Norska now. They snowball significantly by the end game, whereas it was the opposite case in Warhammer 2, even though they still had those buffs because of the supply lines. They actually got it got harder and harder as the campaign progressed because you couldn't occupy every settlement. But in Warhammer 3, Norska is super, stupidly strong. Anyway, I really appreciate this guy putting in this maximum amount of effort to get this done. Um... Marauder Berserkers are stupidly strong, but I'd say that the Savage Orc Biggins are still stronger than them. And in a straight-up fight, they would win. Anyway, that's the end of this one here, guys. Let me know in the comments below what you think of this Doomstack, whether it exceeded or uh, didn't meet your expectations. Let me know. Appreciate you guys. Don't forget to subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Later, guys.